Hey what's up guys, OSJ here and today we'll be taking a look at games that I would say were better on home ports than they were on the arcade. Graphics wise, most of the earlier games were better on the arcade, so these are mostly judged on an overall gameplay experience. There are 12 games in total in my list, with systems ranging from NES to PlayStation 2. So let's take a look at games that were better on home ports than they were on arcade. First up is Chelnov Atomic Runner. This game was released in 1988 by Data East for Arcade and it's a non-stop run and gun platform game. The action is super fast and the directional controls are pretty unique, but they work and it's got perfect music that suits the game style. Here we have a Mega Drive version which was released some 4 years after. The game was a total plot redesign, as the arcade caused controversy over its links to the Soviet nuclear failure. Anyway, it's a super slick version of the original, the music is a great step up from the already class arcade version. Next we have Buy on a Commando. This is a Capcom classic that had a truly awesome gameplay style. The game was the first game I ever played with a grapple action and has influenced multiple games since, the latest being the remake called Buy on a Commando Rearmed. This is the NES version and again it's a total rewrite but one that really adds more depth to an already great game. The whole experience of this game is better than the arcade and with the more realistic character designs I feel it really works on delivering a better overall game. Next up is Toki. This was a super popular arcade game with a deadly spitting ape. While the arcade was never one of my favourite games, I still see its appeal, and I recently have been playing it on the Mega Drive version for the high score challenge, but that's not the version we are going to see next. This is Toki on the Amiga. I find this version much more playable than the arcade and the music is totally awesome too. As with a lot of Amiga games, the devs really put their quirky mark on it, starting with the nipple slip of the kidnapped girlfriend at the start. Next up is Tekken 2, and this is one of my all time favourite arcade games, so to have it on the list where the home version was better was a real treat. All my favourite characters are back in this sequel, and some extra ones too. It delivered everything and more that we got with the awesome first game. <laughs> Ah! 
This is the PlayStation 1 version. It is, as you can see, a pure beautiful game for the year, and it has improved graphics, sound and gameplay. For me, this was the moment that arcades really arrived in our homes, and it's one of my favourite PlayStation games ever made. While we're on with Tekken, we might as well add Tekken Tag Tournament of a mix. This is a spin-off of the Tekken games and it took all the things we love from those games and added a tag element which really worked. Here is the PlayStation 2 version, and as you can see it's a true upgrade of what the arcade had to offer. The characters look smoother, the backgrounds are more realistic looking and has great shadowing. But it's not just about looks either, this game flows much faster and the overall feel of the game is one that leaves you thinking, wow. <laughs> Cotton, Fantastic Night Dreams is next. This is a cute little horizontal witch em up that was released in 1991. It's a smooth shooter, but as a shoot em up fan, it never really floated my board. Here we have the Sharp X68K version. This system was renowned for turning out arcade perfect shoot em ups, and with this game, I think they even excel the original with a super smooth gameplay and easy to spot graphical differences in the parallax scrolling clouds, etc. I didn't particularly like Cotton on the arcade, but this version rocks. Vigar's next, and this is a game I mainly remember for the music, which is brilliant. The game war, although quite popular, is a bit repetitive and becomes quickly boring, for me anyway. <laughs> Here is the NES version, and again, Nintendo took a popular game and built on it with some extra features such as the top down levels. Not only that though, the game feels much less linear and more of an adventure platform game, giving it better longevity. Turtles in Time is next, and this is the sequel to the brilliant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Looking cartoon action with up to four players on at once, which made it a firm favourite with me and my mates.
Here is a SNES version, and although it looks wise it's simply arcade perfect, the gameplay is where this one shines for me. It flows much better and is less fiddly to get out of trouble, which quite frankly pissed me off with the arcade version at times. Here we have Silkworm. This was one of the most popular games of its time in the arcades, mostly because it's just an awesome two player game with two different vehicles, and one that I don't remember ever seeing before this game. It's super hard though which puts a lot of people off. This is the Amiga version, and it's a truly great horizontal shooter for the system. The sound is much improved on this version, and the overall gameplay is a much pleasanter experience because the difficulty is manageable. Punch Out is next, this is one I used to play a lot back in the day. I was heavily into boxing and loved the Rocky films, so this game and Final Round were all favourites of mine. It's a different aspect to what we were used to with the see through third person view, but it just worked. This is the NES version, and one that I had and loved. The see-through third person was gone, and replaced with a solid little Mac. The gameplay is much more forgiving than the arcade, which was sometimes a nightmare, but I guess that was to make more money. Contra is next, and this is probably the best of the games that was bettered on the NES. The game is a side scrolling two player shoot em up that was massive in the arcades. The difficulty was hard but fair, but I never liked the vertical screen aspect on the arcade as it felt too squeezed. Here we have the NES version. This is not only better than the arcade, but it's also one of the best NES games ever made. The aspect ratio is perfect, giving the game a much better playing window. The music is perfect, the gameplay is perfect, or it's just a perfect 8-bit arcade conversion. Ok so last but certainly not least is Soul Calibur. This is my favourite fighting game of all time, it's just awesome. The characters are all well designed but my go to character will always be Keelik. I actually completed this recently in the arcade club in Bury and it still plays as good today as it ever did.
this victory strengthened the soul of You win! And now, here we have not only my favourite fighting game of all time, but also my favourite Dreamcast game of all time. This took what I thought was perfection on the arcade to a new level. It's one of the times when I first thought wow when looking at graphics. The gameplay was also better on the Dreamcast, with much faster flowing moves. In short, this game is the ultimate fighting game for me. This victory strengthened the soul of King. You win! Battle 2, fight! Okay, that's it for this video. Please let me know in the comments below if you know of any home versions that were better than on the arcade. And please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.